Now, here's the other thing. The first Reformation, back with Martin Luther and all those guys, gave the word back to the people. We're now in the second Reformation, which has given ministry back to the people, which means this. Uh, when we have an opportunity to repurpose a campus, start a new campus, start a new work, start a regional campus, you're the ones who are going to be the leaders of it. Uh, you're going to be the disciple-making team. You're going to be the worship leaders. Some of you are even going to be the pastors of those churches. Uh, you're going to be the one that has the burden of this is where one needs to start. Let me show you, Mike, what's going on and the opportunities that are here. You're going to be the ones who lead that and who execute that. Priesthood of the believer. That is a great Baptist teaching that we have shallow, you know, watered down to the point that basically you think it means my opinion is the same as your opinion. That's not what it means. The great teaching of the priesthood of the believer means there is no one that blocks your access to Jesus Christ. You don't go through another human being. You don't have a priest between you and the Lord Jesus. You get to go to him in person. You aren't a priest ministering in the presence of the Lord. And as a priest, you then have the obligation and responsibility to administer the grace that you find in the presence of God to those who are around you, to the brokenness, to the woundedness that you see around you. That's what the priesthood of the believer means. And that's your right as a child of Jesus Christ. That's your calling as a child of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The status quo of coming to church Serving on a few committees is not going to turn around our lost nation. It's not going to cut it. And that means all of us are going to be finding new levels of commitment and new levels of expression. And the door is right in front of us.